This is Radar from the Radar Taint Blog coming at you with another edition of Movie Reviews and Observation number 182. I was able to get in seven movies this week without even having to watch a movie on Saturday. So the first movie that I watched this week was, again, trying to watch a short movie on Sunday when I'm helping my grandmother out. And I watched a movie called Caveat. And it was literally some weird description. Let me read this to you because it's weird. In desperate need of money, Isaac accepts the job looking after his landlord's niece. Olga for a few days, but there's a catch, which obviously the guy didn't tell him before he agreed. Drove him somewhere, went on a boat, it's on an island. But he has to wear a leather harness and a chain that restricts his movements to certain rooms in order to protect her extremely mental state because her mother died, other people, and her dad died recently, all this other stuff. Obviously, once left alone with Isaac, she exhibits erratic behavior. He makes discoveries in the house that trigger a deeply buried traumatic memory. And it's just like really weird and dumb and just a lot of bad acting and weird stuff happening. The only saving grace, it was like 80 something minutes, but it was just not really good. Then I watched The Sun because I swapped shifts with, with my coworkers, so I wasn't working in the, mo at, in the morning. So I was like, you know, get up, I'll watch a movie, get it out of the way before I come home from closing. And it got Hugh Jackman in there. He's the father. Lauren Dern's his ex, Vanessa Kirby's his current wife. Anthony Hopkins plays his father. So Anthony Hopkins, I don't know if he's like rich or he's a politician or whatever, but he's like big time, but he apparently was a bad dad to Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman's kind of feeling resentful from how he wasn't there for his son because he, you know, he married someone else. Now there's a baby, but now his son's having issues with school and Laura Dern's like, oh my God, I can't handle it. It's too much. And he feels guilty. So he lets his son live in his home. And he thinks everything is cured, but his son is doing the same thing. Skipping school, lying to him, all this other stuff. And it's a very sad movie because he's got a mental health issue. And instead of just trying to get him help, ultimately, it's a tragic ending in this movie. It was very sad. So, like, Hugh Jackman, please stick to real steel superhero movies or even singing movies like Les Mis or, or, Le Mis or you know, Greatest Showman. Because this was just not good. Interesting movie. I didn't say it was a great movie, but there's James Norton and Gemma and Gemma Ayrton, who I thought looked like here nightly, but I was wrong. It's basically it's a little bit. It's based off a true story where an MI six, MI five agent. That's what he's saying. He's undercover and he's uh, extorting people for money and he's kidnapping them and he's quote unquote recruiting them and he's going on these missions and he like keeps changing identities and all this other stuff and he falls for this woman. And he does the same thing to her, and she takes, like, a woman's scorn like no other with a revenge. And it goes after him in spite of what the, the police are doing, in spite of, like, the FBI or the consulate or whatever. And she tries to get him, and she's, like, hell-bent on getting him caught and exposing him for what he is. And I thought it was a cool, like, cat-and-mouse game. Who's ahead of the other, the con man or her? So it was a pretty interesting movie. I've seen some of the actors in this movie... But for the most part, I didn't really know anyone in particular. But yeah, I thought it was a pretty intriguing espionage movie. Then I watched Empire of Light. And I like the idea it took place like in the past. For like movie theaters and, you know, Simple Life at the time. With Olivia Coleman, Toby Jones as the projection operator. Colin Firth and a few other actors I've heard of. And like, it's, it takes place with her obviously being the manager of this movie theater. Colin Firth, the boss, he's kind of abusing her, but whatever. And she starts a, an interesting relationship with a young man who didn't go to college and dealing with racism and stuff. So it was an interesting movie. But I guess Sam Mendes, the singer, made this movie. But it was a little bit too slow and dragged on a bit. So it felt like I was watching a movie that was more than two hours. Even though this comes in at an hour and 55 minutes. But it was okay. Not the worst ending, not the best ending, but it was okay. Then I finally was able to know thanks to the person who's hijacking the Detective Night Redemption DVD from the Scully Book Library. We watched, me and my root friend finally finished watching the sequel to the first one where I thought I told you it was well written put together. So this takes place literally the moment after Bruce Willis is arrested. And so is the, the remaining athlete, the football player. And it's still got, you know, Lachlan Moreno, even though he's in a wheelchair. And it's basically there's some sort of like... Christmas bomber who's like killing and bombing people and stealing money and they're trying to figure out like where he is because obviously it's interesting that Detective Knight even though like he's from like you know New York he was in LA or something I don't know 
that's a little bit confusing. Same thing with, you know, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the other guy and, you know, where it really takes place. Because it's confusing if they were in L.A. or New York. But I'm going to say they were in New York in this one, obviously. And that's where... But obviously, when they were robbing things, you're like, okay, they're different places. So, it's basically a convict who is like the pastor and stuff. So it's an interesting plot twist of who's behind everything. And then the police department's like, we need you and your great detective skill to outwit the bad guy and stop them with the help of that former football player. And I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was pretty interesting. You know, a little bit gory, some silliness, but I liked it. Again, for some reason, this specific set of movies that Bruce Willis is in, where it's a trilogy and not just a, a two movie. Seemed to have really good acting and really good plots and a lot of things going on. So I'd recommend continue watching this series until we watch the third one. Then because I had watched a bad horror film, three hour and 15 minute to two hour dramas that some of them dragged on and were depressing. And a Bruce Willis action movie. I was like, I'm going to go watch a comedy. So I watched Confess Fletch where John Hamm is trying to use his charm and his looks to woo everyone. And he supposedly has this hot Italian girlfriend whose father goes missing, but then he's hired to look for the paintings. And he's got like a, a step and her, and her stepmother's also a suspect. And he goes to Boston and he, and it starts off where he's in the apartment where he notices a woman's dead. So Roy Wood Jr. I'm glad he's being in some movies. You know, he's a good stand-up comedian and actor. He's like a detective and think he's the one. But he's like, I'm a former investigative journalist of some rapport. So I'm going to solve this for you. So it's like a series of disasters of trying to solve it. Like with the crazy neighbor, the crazy art guy played by Kyle MacLachlan. And Mauricio Gay Harden playing an Italian, even though she's not. And Robert Picardo playing an Italian, but he's not, you know. So it was interesting. And then John Slattery, who was on a one-year Fox show that I really liked. You know, that they should have renewed. He's like a, his support, supposed former friend or boss. It's like all these interesting characters and in trying to figure out how it is all involved. Like who stole the art, what type of art ring is going on and who did it. It was, it was interesting to watch something silly and nonsensical and sometimes isn't really realistic or makes sense. To see how bad John Hamm can get himself into trouble and try to get out of this. So it was funny. A lot of actors I've seen before. Some of them I didn't recognize their names, but I know their faces overall. It was enjoyable to sit back and relax and watch something funny. Then I watched Night of the Sicario. And based on looking at the cover, you're like, wow, look at Natasha Henstridge. She looks like she's a bad person. Like a, She's really tough with the gun. And then there's this DA agent and stuff. And it's just, it was horribly written. I, I didn't really, the cinematography wasn't that great. The action wasn't that great. It was just like, let's throw the whole Sicarios are coming after a woman testifying against these Colombian bad guys. And her husband has some secret code and the daughter's there and they get ambushed. And the woman who ha who's supposedly testifying, they kill her off super quickly and eventually the father dies. And the, all the DA agents are mostly killed and this one's trying to save this girl and the father. And they find like a nursing home and it has to do with this woman who's on her last leg financially and these old people, and they're talking about religion and faith and how they're trying to save the day and the daughter and stuff. And that, like, the agent comes and saves the day, but then he actually wants the code or whatever it is for money reasons, and they somehow kill him. And everything's wrapped up in a nice bow, even though her parents are dead. And I was like, yeah, it was not that good. I fell asleep through it, not because it was boring, because it was just, I was tired, but not that great. So obviously, I think the best movie I watched this week would be continuing to watch the Detective Knights franchise of Bruce Willis, because it was probably, this franchise so far has been probably some of the best straight-to-DVD movies he's made in the last six, seven years, because a lot of them I've noticed have been junk. If you want to watch something dumb and stupid where you know, like, everyone in there, I'd watch Confess Flatch, and then I would say Rogue Nation was a cool cat and mouse, like, espionage spy movie. I liked it. It was pretty good. I would not recommend Nice Cario because it's just crap, nor caveat. And Empire Light is all up to you if you want to sit through an almost two-hour-long dr bridge drama that takes place in the past or a very depressing Hugh Jackman movie. But can't every week get movies that are either not bad or not good. They're in the middle, and there has to be bad movies out there, like two this week and two end movies and two, two average and one good one. 
But thanks again for listening to this is Movie Brews Observation Number 182. From the Raider Table Lock, I'm Raider. See you guys next time.